OpenAI just announced a bunch of audio model updates. Let's watch their live stream and I'll give you my thoughts. Today is really, really exciting. We're moving beyond text to voice agents. So in a way, voice is a very natural human interface. And today, we're going to enable developers and businesses to build voice agents. Okay, so I completely agree. Voice is definitely gonna be the interface of AI in the future. It's highly under leveraged right now. I really don't even understand it because we have such capable text to speech, speech to text and speech to speech models that I really think developers should be thinking more about voice first interfaces. And so we're going to announce a bunch of new models and tools for that. So let's hear it directly from the team who built that offering. Thank you, Olivia. Hi, everyone. I'm Shen Yi. I work on OpenAI research team. Hello. I'm Yaroslav, I'm an engineer on OpenAI API team. And I'm Jeff Harris, I work on the OpenAI API product team. Today we're releasing three new models and a bunch of new tools and capabilities designed to make it really easy for developers to build rich, human-like voice experiences. We have two new state-of-the-art speech-to-text models that outperform our previous model, Whisper, on literally every language that we've tested. We have a new text-to-speech model that for the first time lets developers control not just what the model says, but how it says it. And then we have a big update to our agents SDK to make it really easy to turn text-based agents into voice agents. So let's pause for a second. What is a voice agent and how do I even build one? Yeah, great question. We think of agents in general as AI systems that can act independently on behalf of a user or a developer. So you might see a text agent if you visit a website and you see a chat box in the bottom right and you want to ask about the product catalog or your recent orders. That's by text. You can do the same thing with voice. So you can call in and be speaking to an AI voice. Um, there's other ways to use voice agents. One of my favorites is language learning experiences where you can have a voice agent that's coaching you on pronunciation, creating a lesson plan for you, doing mock conversations with you in the language that you're learning. Many, many ways to build voice agents. So I still use advanced voice mode pretty often. I have it mapped to my action button on my iPhone and I'm constantly using it when I can't use the screen. So if I'm driving or if I have a quick question and I don't wanna type it out, it's definitely the fastest way to get information. It still leaves something to be desired in terms of speed from when I actually want to accomplish something to getting the response back from the AI, but it's only gonna get better from here. So what he's going to explain right now is the two types of voice models out there. We have the more sophisticated approach, the more recent approach of a speech to speech model. That is a model that takes in speech and outputs speech. It doesn't transcribe it along the way versus the more traditional approach, which is the AI model takes voice, transcribes it to text, does its thing, and then converts it back into audio at the end. If you use ChatGPT advanced voice mode, that is a voice-to-voice -voice model. And it's a lot better in my opinion because it has a better understanding of your intonation, your mood, how you're saying things, the emphasis you're putting on specific words, and it can also reflect that back to you using specific emphasis on words and other things like that. All right, let's keep watching. We see two primary approaches that developers take. The first one is using more futuristic speech to speech models. All right, let me pause here for a second. So this method one is the more recent, more advanced approach. You have a single model in the middle, taking in speech and outputting speech. The traditional method is to take speech, convert it to text, do something with the text, and then convert it back into speech. As they're about to say, method two, the more traditional approach is nice and modular, but it suffers from two main problems. One there's a lot more latency. When you're having to use different models and you're converting it back and forth between text and speech, that takes time. And number two, which is really the biggest problem, is when you convert speech to text, you lose a lot. You lose a lot of the emphasis on words, your tone, everything. All of the emotion in your voice gets lost when it converts to text. Now, something interesting to think about is we have a very rich, text-based culture on the internet. And we've figured out how to put more emphasis on certain texts when you're texting with a friend or a family member or writing a post on Reddit or Twitter or anything. There are different ways to do that. Italics, bold, emojis, and then even kind of the meme culture took it even further. But from what I've seen, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, I really haven't seen speech to text models that really take advantage of these text decorators to include those things that get lost in typical text transcription. And you know what else is powered by OpenAI's models? The sponsor of today's video. 
Admin Companion. Admin Companion is an AI powered co-administrator for Linux systems. This means that you can use high level natural language to create detailed execution plans and actual Linux commands and execute all of this inside the Linux shell, vastly simplifying the work you have to do as a Linux administrator. And it also has a built-in security layer that prevents the AI from executing commands without the user's approval. Check out this quick demo. This is installing Docker and an Oracle database container with a single sentence. Here's another example of speeding up troubleshooting and rapid log file analysis. So try out Admin Companion for free. I'm going to provide a sign up link down below. Make sure you click it in the description to check this out. And once again, thanks to Admin Companion for sponsoring this video. Now back to the video. Developers often love the chained approach first because it's modular. They can mix and match all the different components so they're using the best models for their use case. They also love it because it's the easiest way to get really high reliability. The gold standard in terms of intelligence is still text-based models, though the speech-to-speech -speech models are catching up quickly. And then the third reason they love it is it's easier to get started. You can take all the work that you've done in a text-based agent, and you can prepend a speech-to-text model on one side, put text-to-speech on the other side, and now you have a voice agent. Yeah, so if you're building something with a more modern voice-to-voice -voice model, you kind of have to build it from the ground up with that in mind. Versus, as he just said, cutting edge models, Cloud 3.7, O3, basically all of the large language models are just that. They are text-based models. And so you can add voice to them pretty easily using the more traditional transcription method. So for today, we're mostly gonna focus on how we have new tools to help you build voice agents with that chained approach. So let's get into it. A few things to cover. We'll start with speech to text where we have two new models, GPT-40 transcribe, and GPT-40 mini transcribe. GPT-40 is kind of old at this point because we have 01, we have 03, we have GPT-4.5. So it's a little bit surprising to hear they're still using this old naming for these newer models. I'm happy to introduce more technical details for our new uh, speech-to-text models. Um, compared to our last generation models, Whisper and the Whisper 3, our new generation model is based on our large speech model. This means this new model has been trained on trillions of audio tokens. It also ingests our latest technologies and also architecture of our models. We also distill the larger model down to a much smaller size one, which is a GPT-40 mini transcribe. The smaller size model is faster and more efficient. It also retains as good transcription capability as possible compared to the larger models. Let's see how good our models are. We measure the accuracy of our transcription by word error rate. The word error rate is the percentage of uh, words that our model gets wrong. So of course, the lower the word error rate is, it means the higher our model actually performs. And then the dark blue is the newest 4 and the one beside it is 4 Mini. Exactly. As you can see, compared to our previous generation models, Whisper 2 and Whisper 3, our newest model actually perform almost like um, on every single language we performed across the board. Nice. Yeah, so these look like pretty big improvements. I mean, the error rate was already pretty low for Whisper Large V2 and Whisper Large V3, but for certain languages, we can see massive improvements. GPT-40 transcribe and GPT-40 mini transcribe. 4.0 is available in the API today for just 0.6 cents per minute, same price as Whisper, and 4.0 mini transcribe is 0.3 cents, so half price. Really, really great state-of-the-art options. We're also enhancing our speech-to-text APIs. All right, so those are really good prices, but to be honest, it feels like if you're doing speech-to-text or text-to-speech, open source models, which are effectively free, I mean, obviously, if you need to run them at production scale, you need GPUs to back them up, but they are really, really good already. And so if we're talking about error rate differences of, you know, point something percent, for a lot of use cases, it might not even make a difference. And then all of a sudden you're going from paying 0.3 or 0.6 cents per minute versus probably a fraction of that using an open source model. And a lot of these text-to-speech, speech-to-text models can be run completely locally. So if you have a use case where you need to run it on your computer, using a hosted option might actually be the worst option. So developers can pass in a continuous stream of audio into the model and get a continuous stream of text in response. That makes it easier to build really fast experiences. 
and we're bundling into these APIs a bunch of hard problems that developers need to solve to build voice experiences. So they come with noise cancellation, so the model isn't going to get tripped up by background sounds. They also include a new semantic voice activity detector, which chunks the audio up based on when the model thinks the user's actually finished speaking. So as a developer, you don't need to worry about processing some half-spoken idea. All right, those are really cool features. Noise cancellation automatically, voice chunking automatically, that's really nice. That's probably what you're gonna be paying for if you need those features. All those capabilities are available in the speech-to-text APIs as well as in our real-time API. So very excited for you to check that out. Next capability is a new text-to-speech model, GPT-40 Mini TTS. Yaroslav, would love for you to show us how this one works. Yeah, let me pull this up. So um, <clears throat> this is openai.fm. Um, it's a website uh, we built just to make it easy to play with this new model. Um, so as you can see, there are a bunch of voices that you can choose from. Um, there are different prompts that we pre-generated, but you can also type in your own. So this is basically a new field that we added. It's an instructions field that tells the model how you want it to speak the text. Um, so yeah, let's maybe Try um, try some um, mad scientist, way. please. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> As you can see, like we prompted basically like how you, we want to deliver, what kind of so tone we want. High energy. Have. It's yeah. So it's really nice that you can give it these additional direction instructions as you're telling it what to read. But again, you're giving it direction and you have the text, but there definitely is still something lost there. Now, I think where conveying tone and emotion is especially important is going from speech to text. So taking somebody, a human's voice, and converting it into text and maintaining that emotion and that tone and the cadence and everything else. That's the important part, and I don't think they're gonna be able to solve that, at least not anytime soon. There's kind of this metadata later that needs to sit beside the actual text to say, here's how each syllable or each word or each sentence is spoken. Ahaha, the stars tremble before my <laughs> genius. The rift is open, the energy surging, unstable, perhaps <laughs> dangerous, most certainly <laughs> Captain Ryland. This is really intense. Okay, so that's a lot. I'm curious if we took the same voice and tried to, yeah, let's yeah, make let's it serene. Yeah, let's yeah, let's see, how about we... Let's say um, the live stream is going really well. Yes. You're doing great. Yeah. This live stream is going really well. You are doing great. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, All right, yeah, both of those sound really good. All right, so next they're gonna show how to convert a text-based agent using the recently announced Agents SDK into a voice-based agent. And it's a bit of coding and not super interesting to watch live, so I'm gonna skip over that part. And now let me just show you it in action. And let's see. Hey, what was my last order? So it's doing the tool calls. Yes. Your last order was on February 9th, 2024. You ordered some Patagonia shorts in Olive, and it's all fulfilled. If you need help... What was the order number? The order number for your Patagonia shorts is AD507. If you need anything else, feel free to ask. Yeah, I mean, it's really cool that you can add voice into any really AI workflow that you already have pretty easily using these new APIs. So I really appreciate that. And once again, I really do think voice is the interface of the future for artificial intelligence. But the best part is you can have both options. You can do text or you could do voice. And I guess if I'm a developer, I'm going to be wondering, if I build a voice agent, how do I debug it? How do I figure out if it's working well? What yeah. do you have there? Um, it's a very good question. So. Um, this is a tracing UI that we demoed last week, um, and we updated it to support audio now. Um, so let's see. So this seems like uh, my most recent chat. I practiced a lot. Um, and uh, we can see that the, uh, the, there are traces here from our um, most recent conversation. Let me refresh this. Oh, this is the most recent chat. Um, yeah, so, so we can see that there are traces here from our uh, most recent conversation. Um, and as you can see, there are like all sorts of events. So for example, we can click on this one. This is my first um, request to the agent. Let's play it. Hey, what was my last order? Yeah, so it's integrated with audio. You can play it, you can look up metadata, you can see different timelines. This is a pretty slick debugging interface and tracing interface. I really like this. I actually haven't played with it myself yet, but 
definitely plan to. All right, so those are the major announcements. A lot of cool updates to the audio models, a lot of nice new features for developers. Definitely check it out. Uh, yeah, openai.fm if you want to play around with some of these voices. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.